First of all, I would like to thank Klaus Siebenrock for the invitation. This is the second time I came to this course, and the first was in 1992, where I learned quite a lot, and I'll, I'll try to elaborate on that, so it's a huge honor to be here. Uh, a little background of what we do is, uh, Turkey is um, one of the countries affected by dysplasia of the hip, so uh, in our institution we uh, do quite a lot, did quite a lot of research and uh, education on preventive measures, surgical procedures to correct dysplasia and uh, the um, problems associated. And of course now we're starting to do more and more total hip arthroplasties and one of the problems we deal uh, is the high riding dislocations. Uh, with the best of our intentions, when we try to treat patients with dysplasia, uh, with the surgical procedures, we actually quite uh, change the anatomy quite a lot. And um, uh, in, especially in difficult cases like these, uh, you could imagine that this is uh, a lot as well. Um, when you look at the previous information about uh, total hip arthroplasty after uh, some sort of uh, uh, pelvic uh, hip preservation surgery, there's really not very much information. There are several papers now coming out with the experience uh, increasing over time. And uh, in general, the message is that you can uh, observe similar results to a so-called standard total hip replacement. However, uh, there are some anatomic challenges uh, because of the anatomic changes. You have to be aware of uh, uh, changes of landmarks and uh, especially due to uh, uh, the uh, surgical, previous surgical procedures, uh, soft tissue uh, changes, you can uh, run into problems in surgery. Uh, if the patient failed early uh, due to uh, a previous um, preservation surgery, there's also other factors that we have to uh, take in consideration because uh, usually the patient is very uh, unhappy with the previous uh, operation. Uh, when you look at the previous information, there's also not very much information about what happened during surgery and uh, what difficulties uh, you can see. So. Um, I, I decided to uh, share some of my personal experience with you uh, on uh, some difficult cases and uh, perhaps uh, shed some light on this uh, subject. Uh, first of all, you have to be aware that there are quite, uh, sometimes uh, can be surprises with significant changes to the anatomic structures. Scar tissue is very uh, important. It can lead to uh, additional complications, and um, there's, there may be some hardware uh, left behind from the previous surgery, which uh, is very difficult sometimes to remove. And uh, these patients usually uh, require um, un un different sizes of implants which we're used to use, and obviously you need uh, some special equipment to remove the previous uh, implants. So uh, when, uh, whenever you're in doubt, I'd recommend additional uh, radiographic studies. I find the Jude uh, graph, uh, radiographs quite helpful, and I don't hesitate taking, uh, getting CT scans and reconstruction of those to uh, help us in surgery. So this is one of the first cases I want to show you. This uh, was a patient that underwent First, uh, an open reduction when she was a child in our institution, and then later she had a Salter uh, osteotomy, and then uh, she underwent a hardware removal, and this is what her hip looks like. You can see that there's significant arthritis in the hip, but when you look at the Jude graphy, uh, radiograph, uh, there's a huge extra-articular osteophyte-like structure, probably because due to the... Uh, previous surgery, and if you are not aware of that, uh, after surgery uh, you could run into problems, and in, this is the, uh, the hip uh, as after dislocation and the femoral head removal, you can see the significant soft tissue 
scarring, and uh, after insertion of the cup, uh, when you dissect the anterior uh, portion of the hip, you can see that the previous uh, graft uh, caused this extra-articular uh, bone structure. Uh, it looks like an osteophyte. Sometimes you can see these on the superior aspect of the acetabulum. And if you don't take this out, uh, you can uh, run into problems because of uh, extra-articular impingement. And uh, uh, this could lead to uh, even dislocations. And this is what the patient looks like after surgery. We've been uh, uh, doing uh, the Bernese osteotomy, the periostabular osteotomy, uh, since 1992 after I came to the course here. And uh, now we're starting to see some patients with uh, early arthritis uh, after 10, 10 years uh, because we uh, operated on many patients that were actually very good candidates, but you see that uh, we tried to remove the screw, that's a problem there. But um, uh, we were able to do a standard total hip arthroplasty because we uh, stayed away from that screw. Previous femoral osteotomies is a huge problem. Uh, this person had uh, a uh, Shans type osteotomy performed. The plate looks like it's on the outside, but when you look at the CT scan, the femur has remodeled around it. The plate is inside the femoral canal. If you didn't have this information previously, uh, you would have run into problems. And what we did was make our uh, shortening osteotomy through that area. And using special tools, we were able to resect uh, the implant and uh, perform our hip arthroplasty. Here's another case. Again, this plate was completely uh, welded inside. The screws were welded to the plate, actually. And the plate was inside of the femur. Uh, we, uh, I took a long time to re resect this out using burrs, drills. I broke several high-speed burrs uh, trying to remove the screws. And, uh, sorry. Uh, when we made, uh, made our shortening osteotomy because we weakened the proximal femur, it fractured during the uh, implant insertion, and so we had to use additional fixation. Uh, this is a patient we're starting to see Z osteotomies. These are severely deformed femurs. And um, again, in this case, we were able to uh, use a very small size femoral component after resection of the uh, previous osteotomy and uh, correction of the leg, you have to be aware of the uh, knee in, in patients like this. This is again another patient with Salter's uh, osteotomy and she also underwent a derotational osteotomy. The, the hardware was left inside and uh, as you see, it took us a long time to take it out but uh, we didn't go after the K-wire because it was away from our hip. This is another patient with previous bilateral uh, osteotomies, and uh, the plate uh, was, a, again, a challenge to remove, but uh, uh, we also had a, a fracture on the proximal fragment, but we were able to fix this, and the patient healed uneventfully. This is another patient, varus osteotomy, blade plate. After removal of the blade plate, everything looks fine, but as we reduce the hip, it fractured through there, and we uh, fixed it, but this fixation failed later on, and um, the patient refused further surgery. Again, uh, previous osteotomies, uh, bilateral hip replacements, which uh, ended up uneventful, but we required special small size components to deal with. Uh, arthrodesis is another problem. This is a patient. Uh, which had an arthrodesis, and uh, we did an MRI. Her muscles looked good, so we decided to do, break, take down the arthrodesis. Using smaller size components, we were able to get a hip replacement in, but she was never happy because she had a disc and eventually had to have additional back surgery. Um, this morning, since we had an avascular necrosis case, I went to show this uh, fibular all allograft. Uh, these are very troublesome case. As you see, the fibula allograft, uh, autograft, I'm, I'm sorry, is, 
is like a marble, and it took us uh, a high-speed bird and almost uh, an hour to uh, open up the femur to put this implant in, and you see we were unable to remove the screw. Uh, one problem we started seeing in our country is, um, since hip arthroscopy is gaining, uh, fractures of the femoral neck is a problem uh, with uh, over, uh, too much resection. And these patients are very unhappy patients because they come uh, with high expectations and they um, have to go undergo a total hip replacement early on. So uh, previously operated patients are always a challenge. Uh, pre please prepare well if you want undertake these patients. Make sure you have instruments, equipments, and be aware of surprises. Inform the patient, and if you fail to prepare, you'll fail to pre you're prepared to fail. Thank you. <laughs>